anyways uh one day this would have been late 2018 um i had just finished my stream and i was uh getting ready to watch an episode of the office with aaron and it was about 6 p.m and um we we're sitting in the living room and i got up to get a drink out of the fridge in the kitchen so i walked down the hallway from the living room into the kitchen and i'm looking in the fridge for a soda and aaron says um nikki there's someone at the door spoiler alert for anyone who doesn't know my real my name my name in real life is not melton i know that that's going to be immersion breaking for a lot of you um so she says there's someone at the door and uh i said oh really because i didn't hear i didn't hear relax you're fine you're fine chat <laughs> you're fine you're fine relax so so i say uh so i say what do you i don't i don't hear anyone at the door and she says yeah there's someone at the door and i just said oh well whatever like you don't have to answer it it's our house we don't have to answer the door just because someone's knocking on it and then in a frantic voice i hear her say someone's in the house and i look down the hallway from the kitchen and there's someone standing in the living room staring at Aaron and because of the way the windows were I couldn't make any make out any details of them all I knew was that they were in the house and they were staring at Aaron and they were between me and Aaron so sort of like a mama bear I immediately thought well um I guess I have to kill someone now I thought like I I, I'm going to have to kill someone. Someone has invited themselves into our house and is now standing in the living room staring at Aaron. I'm going to have to kill them, I guess. I wasn't wasn't hoping to have murder on my list, on my bucket list, but here we are. Um, so I fucking, I closed the distance into the living room so quickly I don't even remember running in there. And I realize that it's a, um, it's, uh, like an 18, 19, 20 year old girl wearing plaid, a plaid shirt and like black Lululemon jogging pants. And she's just standing there staring at Aaron. And I'm like, hey, who the fuck are you? And she says, hi, my name is Angela McKenzie and I need you to call 911 right now. So I'm still trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. And at this point, I thought maybe she had gotten away from like an abusive partner or household, or maybe she had been kidnapped or maybe she was ha having an allergic reaction or something. I had no idea what this meant. So I take out my phone and I call 911 and I'm like, uh, yeah, hi, uh, can I get, can I get, uh, and I'm realizing I don't even know what I'm calling 911 for. And I was like, I, can I get police to one, two, three, four fake street? And, um, they say, yeah, sure, what's the emergency? And I sort of look at her and I'm like, oh. And she says, oh, I'll take that. And she takes the phone and she goes, hi, yeah, I need you to come to 1234 Fake Street right now. Uh, there's three of them and they're currently in the living room and they're talking and I don't like it. And I want you to come over here, but you have to be nice to my mom because sometimes my mom is a little bit weird. She doesn't take her medication. So you need to make sure that you're nice to her. And you also need to make sure that you're nice to my brother. I know that sometimes you guys are nice to my brother. You always have to make sure that you're nice to him. Sometimes he doesn't take his medication either. You need to make sure that you're nice to him because the three of them are in there and I just can't handle it. But they're all talking. What am I going to do? But they can't do anything. But I need to come down here right now. Make sure that you're nice to me. You can't do anything. Don't be mean to my brother. Don't be mean to my mom. Okay. All right. And then she gives me the phone back. And I was like, uh, what the fuck was like, what the fuck just happened? Like, I didn't, I didn't hear anything. I don't, I just, I didn't understand any, anything of what just happened. So she sits down and she's like, they're on their way. And I was like, okay. And she sits down and she's looking at Aaron and I, and she says, um, where's the dog? And we looked at her and we were like, uh, the dog. And she says, where's the dog? And we said, uh, no dog. There's. We don't own a dog. And she said, you don't own a dog? And we said, no. And she said, oh, okay, where are the kids? And Aaron and I just looked at each other again. And we were like, what? What kids? <laughs> what? And she says, where are the kids? And we said, we don't have any kids. We're not, we don't have kids. We don't have a dog. And she says, no kids, no dog. Um, I guess some people would consider that love. 
And we were like, ah, uh, what the fuck? And so she's sitting there and she looks at Aaron and I and she says, uh, oh, anyways, where's the party? And um, we were like, oh, um, oh, we're not we're not actually having a party. We're not really the partying type. We're more of the like work and then stop working and then watch a couple episodes of The Office and then, you know, play fucking Angry Birds for an hour and then go to bed. So we're not really the partying type. And she interrupts me and says, I didn't say the party was here. I said, where's the party? <laughs> and I was like, whoa, okay. Uh, I have no idea. I don't know where any party is. I have no clue where a party is. And... Um, she just sort of sits there like, yeah, okay. And so she's, she's sitting there again. And I was just like, what is this? Like, what is this conversation? It's so weird. So she looks at me and she does this thing that, you know, the, the sort of like sound you can make with your mouth. She looks at me and she goes, she's just staring at me until finally I make eye contact. And she goes, I don't have to explain that to you. And I was like, what the fuck? Ah. Uh, yeah, you got whatever the fuck that meant. Okay, click right back at you. Like, uh, um, and so Aaron just trying to sort of, um, uh, like pass the time, you know, generate some conversation so she's not just sitting there being crazy all day. She says, Oh, so are you from 1233 Fake Street, as in the neighbor's house? And, um, she she says, oh, no, I'm actually from 1231 Archibald Street over by the Recreation Center. And then immediately starts going, oh, oh, why did I tell you that? Why did I tell you that? Why did I tell you where I live? Why did I tell you where I live? Why did I tell you where I live? But I know where you live. And as soon as she said that, I was like, okay, now our inside privileges have been revoked. Now you can wait outside. Now it's outside time. Now it's outside time, Angela McKenzie. So uh, I take her to the door and thankfully the cops had just showed up and the cops are standing outside and um, I can see them talking to the neighbors next door and they're like, uh, okay, yeah, no worries, ma'am. Just, you know, responding to a call, but you have a nice day. As in the neighbor was like, I don't know what the fuck you guys are talking about. So Angela goes outside. I basically push her outside. <laughs> She goes outside and uh, I close the door. Now I should back up and say at this point that up until this point, Aaron and I, we, Aaron and I disagree about almost nothing, almost nothing. Um, but the, uh, one of the things that we disagreed on was I grew up always locking our doors. Like our, if we have, uh, if we have a front door, I always lock the door. I always lock the back doors. I always lock all the doors and windows of the house. People that live in America, I, I hear that that's a very common, uh, a very common thing. Can I see some pogs and claps for Christina 1214? Thank you so much for the five gifted subs, dude. That was really generous, Christina, thank you. So we always lock the doors, but that is very uncommon in Canada. In Canada, it is very uncommon to uh, lock all of your doors. A lot of them leave them unlocked. A lot of my friends, my, my friend from BC had her car broken into three times in one month last year. And every time she'd get progressively angrier and angrier and angrier. And I always, I'd always be like, man, just lock your fuck. She'd be like, she'd be like, oh, like I just had my like old, my old iPod taken out of my car. And I'm like, oh man, that fucking sucks. And then like a week later, she's like, oh, someone took my lunchbox out of my car. I'm like, did you leave it unlocked? And she's like, well, yeah. I'm like, dude, lock your fucking doors. What are you kidding me? So anyways, um, uh, people usually leave them unlocked. So it's understandable that Erin grew up leaving her doors unlocked. So I had told her like, I want to lock the doors. And she said, well, I don't want to lock the doors. And so we agreed that we would lock the doors when we left our house. And then when we were at home, can I see some pogs and claps for Kato's live? When we were at home, we would leave the doors unlocked. So we didn't have to lock the doors if we were in our house, but if we were gone, we would lock the doors. Uh, dude, I locked my door for a shower, exactly. Thank you, Kados, for the five gifted subs. Christina, thank you for the five gifted subs. Hey, Sensei, thank you for the tier three subscription. Welcome to the party. Okay, so we had had this discussion, you know, I wanted to lock the doors. 
she didn't want to lock the doors. So as soon as I push Angela out of the house, I close and lock the door and I turn around and look at Aaron and without even saying a word, she just goes, we'll lock the doors from now on. <laughs> and I say, okay, thank you. So, um, we're sort of standing we're sort of sitting inside and no 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 you know no sooner than we had just sort of finished this discussion about locking the door then i hear someone knocking on the door again and it's angela again and this time she's crying hysterically and i let her inside the house and um i was like hey uh, or, or i didn't let her inside the house she was like i need to come inside and I was like, you can sit in the garage. You are you are a breezeway type of person. You are not allowed inside. You're allowed to sit like in the front porch. So she, we, we get her a chair and she's sitting in the front porch. And I say, what's wrong? And she's like, I don't know. And I said, what's the issue? She said, the RCMP were mean to me. And I said, what? And she said, the RCMP were mean to me. And I said, how are they mean to you? And they're like, oh, they didn't believe me that blah, 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 blah. And I was like, okay. So um, she's sitting there and uh, I was like, yeah, well, anyways, I look at Aaron and I'm like, I'm sure what happened was she probably went out there being crazy and they were like, there's nothing wrong. And so she came in here and she's having a meltdown. So as we're sitting there waiting for the police to come over to get Angela, Angela looks at Aaron and once again, she's just saying these things that make no sense. Like they have no, they're just weird sentences to say. She looks at Aaron, she says, are you going to give it to me now? And Aaron's like, give you what? And she says, uh, the speech. And Aaron's like, what speech? And she says, uh, obviously the speech that I have to tell to the police. And she was like, <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> so I, I was going to help you more, but your door locks. And so I couldn't that's all right. really get out and get back in. That's okay. I'll come, I'll come get you. Don't worry about it. Where are you located at? Uh, if right you're not here, you? if you're not here, where will you be? I'll, I'll come and get you in maybe five minutes. Management? Waste management. All right, I'll come. I'll come fetch you. Okay. Well, I was I was just gonna tell you that this church next door, I think, wow, is kind of screwing you over. You're gonna have to go inside. The doors open and, and mess with their TC to help you out a little bit. Aye, aye. Thanks for the heads up. Holy shit. Hey, denied. Thank you for the tier one. And Kados, thank you for the five more gifted subs. Jesus, that's super generous. Okay. So, um, she looks at Aaron. She says, are you going to give me the speech that I have to give to the police? And we're like, we're like, we have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. What are you talking about? Uh, so, so Aaron looks at her after she says, are you going to give me the speech that I have to give to the police? Aaron looks at her and says, I don't know what you're talking about. And she looks at Aaron and says, well, I do. And we were like, okay. So anyways, the police come up to... Um, the police come up to the door and we sort of step outside and Angela's sitting on the chair in the breezeway and um, uh, the uh, the police come and we're like, oh, hello there, hi. Hey, Angela, time to go. And Angela is like, um, actually, no, the homeowners have said that I'm allowed to stay here until my dad gets here. And the police was like, the police were like, uh-uh. You gotta, you gotta come with us now. And she says, no, I don't have to go with you. The homeowners said that I'm allowed to wait here until the mobile crisis unit arrives. And the police looked at me and immediately I was like, nope, didn't say that, uh-uh. <laughs> didn't say that to her at all. And the, the officer who was responding was like this four foot one lady built like a brick shit house. And she immediately, without skipping a beat, she walks straight into the house and picks up Angela under her arm like a sack of fucking grain and just drags her out of the house. No, just hauls her out of the, I couldn't believe it. This fucking, this fucking woman who was like four feet tall, just walks straight into the fucking house, picks her up under her arm and drags her out of the house. And she's like, ah, you can't do that. I'm allowed to wait for the mobile crisis unit. And the woman's like, fuck no, you're not. The homeowners told you it's time to go. It's time to go, Angela. So she hauls her out of the fucking house. They put her in a police car. They send the police car on its way. And um, the, the, the officer who's remaining, I was like, hey, so what's gonna, what are, the fuck is gonna happen with her? And they were like, we don't really know what that was. So we're gonna send her to the hospital like for evaluation and try to get to the bottom of that. Is that drugs? Is this like psychotic break? Whatever it is. And I said, okay. So Aaron and I sit back down and uh, this is where the story 
gets weird. This is where the story actually gets weird. So, so, uh, so Aaron and I sit back down to continue eating our, uh, eating our dinner and watching The Office. And I hear something that sounds like screaming coming from inside the house. And I don't, I, I don't really understand where the screaming is coming from, but I feel like I hear screaming coming from inside my house. So I uh, get up to try to find out where the screaming is coming from. And I'm walking around the house trying to figure out where it's coming from. And it turns out that it was a woman completely unconnected to Angela who was walking around our house screaming. Uh, and by the time I found her, she was standing in front of our house in the middle of the road. She was the size and stature of Brienne of Tarth from Game of Thrones. She's like seven foot three. She's draped in like this heavy fur coat thing. And she had like chains or some shit. It was like some metal bedazzling or like it looked like a fucking chain hanging around her fucking neck. And she's standing in the fucking front street with this super, super fucking low voice. And she's just standing in the front of the street going, this house is cursed. This house is cursed. There's a curse on this house. Screaming at our house going, there's a curse on this house. The demons are going to come out of this house. Jesus is gonna come down and get the demons out of this house. There's a curse on this house. This house is cursed. This house is cursed. This house is cursed. So I look at Aaron and I'm like, do I call 911 again? I just got off the phone with them seven minutes ago. Do I call them again? And she was like, ah, I mean, maybe she'll just tire herself out if she's screaming in the road. And so, uh, so, I figure, okay, yeah, fair enough. Maybe we'll just wait. Um, and so she's, she's sitting there just screaming, this, this house is cursed. This house is cursed. And finally, our neighbor from across the street opens up their fucking screen doors. Shut up! And this woman who is standing in the front of the, in the middle of the road screaming, is going, this house is cursed. This house is cursed. No demons are safe in this neighborhood. And when her neighbor opens the screen door, goes, shut up! She turns around and goes, you go first and starts walking towards the guy's house. So I'm like, well, now I have to call 911. 911, here we go. Boop, boop, boop. Uh, I call 911 again. I'm like, hi, it's me from 1234 Fake Street again. Just thought I'd let you know there's a gigantic woman in the middle of the street screaming that our house is cursed and Jesus is going to come down and get the demons out of the house uh, and is also now walking towards our neighbor's house, presumably to murder him. And they were like, oh, uh, okay, we'll be right over. Can you tell us some more detail? And as we're having this discussion, a fucking like beige Volvo rips up the street with a door already open and someone in the car pulls this woman into the car and the car just drives off with the door still open while I'm sitting there on the phone. And I was like, ah, uh, I guess you don't need to come here anymore. And they were like, what? And I was like, a car, some beige Volvo just pulled up with a door open and they pulled her into the car and then drove away. And they were like, okay, you let us know if, she comes back and I was like, yeah, you got it. So now is when the story actually gets weird. <laughs> now is when the story actually gets weird. So that is all that happened that night. That's all that happened that night. The, the, the next part is the end of the story. This next part is the conclusion of the story. Because about a week later, Aaron and I wake up at about 1.30, 2 in the morning because we hear a piercing scream coming from next door. One of those scary screams, not the sort of screams that are like, oh, you know, um, uh, it's someone like having a fight. Like it was the sort of scream that you hear 
when someone, like a death scream, like someone who's scared for their life. The sort of scream you expect to hear when someone has a knife pointed at them or is being chased by a fucking cougar, that a blood curdling scream, exactly. It was a blood curdling scream. It was terrifying. And it immediately gets the hackles up. You gets the hairs on the back of your neck up. So I sit up straight and I'm in bed and Aaron and I are sitting there and I say, what the fuck was that? And, um, Aaron, uh, Aaron sits up and she says, I don't know, like, let's just not get involved. And, um, I, I'm so, I'm so like jarred by the sound of this scream that I have to investigate. Now, the thing that I remember that was so weird was that everything was so quiet. I couldn't hear any cars. I couldn't hear any other people. I didn't hear any more shouting. I didn't hear anything. All I heard was that one scream and then nothing. So I'm getting up and I'm kind of like, I make sure all the lights are off so I can look out the windows of my house without anyone know that I'm looking at them. And I look next door at Angela's house and this, and I take a picture of what I see because it gave me one of those things where you feel your, your whole insides just sink right away. I saw something at her house that I had to take a picture of. And this was that thing just standing motionless on her porch, staring at the front door, not moving. What is this? What is that? What the fuck is in their hand? What is this? Not moving at all. And the whole house was completely silent as whatever this is stood on the front stoop, just staring at the house. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so anyways, uh, thank fuck we moved and, uh, <laughs> I, I never got an explanation as to what that was. I watched it for maybe, I mean, I'm sure it was a person. So I watched them, whoever that person is. I watched that person for maybe 10 minutes and they never moved. So I just went back to bed. I thought, well, uh, they're not at my house. So I'm just going to go the fuck to sleep and pretend that I never saw that. Um, and anyways, and that was one of my that was one of my final reactions with them. I have some videos and some pictures that I'll show you another time. I ended up recording on video as the police kicked down their front door because the guy was trying to pour meth ingredients down the sink. He thought he thought it was a raid. So anyways, um, uh, the good news is that we moved to Ontario. We yeah, out with the door locked. We moved to Ontario and our new neighbors are much more agreeable in the sense that I had one conversation with my neighbor who lives right there. I had one conversation with him. He was like this 80 year old man and he, he was beckoning me over one day. And he was like, oh, come over here, come over here. I said, okay. So I sort of walked towards him. Now COVID was going on, so I didn't wanna to get too close. So I walked up a little bit. This was in like September, October. Come here, come here. I said, okay. So I walked over to his side of the yard and uh, I, I, he like leans in, he's like, come here, come on over here. I, I lean in and he just looks at me and he says, break your fucking leaves. And then turns around and walks away. And then a week later he died. He just died. I, his son leaned over the fence like a month afterwards and I was like, oh, hey, who are you? And he introduced himself and I was like, oh, you know, what's your name? And we was like, he was like, yeah, anyways, a couple of few weeks ago, my, uh, my dad passed away. <laughs> I was like, oh, fuck. So I had one conversation in total with my neighbor. He called me over to his side of the yard and said, hey, rake your fucking leaves and then died. <laughs> but did you rake the leaves? Nope. <laughs> I figured the person who complained was no longer issuing complaints. So I didn't, wasn't that super important to me. <laughs> so uh, anyways, that's the Angela story. So you'll, you'll notice that every now and then someone will pop up in chat named Angela McKenzie. And that's where they, that's where the name comes from. Angela fucking McKenzie, dude.